Okay, today we're going to start looking at the different parts of the digestive system. Last time we kind of looked at everything. Today we're going to start splitting things apart. So the alimentary canal is basically the entire tube starting at your mouth and going to your anal opening. So it's a muscular tube. If you stretch it out, it would be about 8 meters long, which is very, very long. Your small intestines, if you've looked at diagrams, when you looked in the cat, they're very coiled. So you have about 8 meters, that's an average, of alimentary canal that's coiled up inside of you. And you can kind of see how it is spread out. This would be your small intestines, which takes up the largest part of it. When you look at the alimentary canal, its wall consists of four layers and the same four layers through the whole thing. Uh, variations a little bit depending on the function of the area that it's going through. So the inside layer is the mucosa, mucus. Uh, it's lined with epithelium. It's attached to a connective tissue. And it surrounds the lumen, and if you remember, lumen means opening. So if we look at a diagram, the lumen, lumen is going to be white. It's the inside, and then the mucosa is what's going to surround that. Its functions, it's protective, basically. It's going to protect tissues. Secretion, absorption, it is the first lining, so that's where secretion and absorption take place. Uh, in some reg regions, the mucosa is modified into folds, uh, such as your stomach has folds on the inside, and that increases the surface area. The more surface area, the better your digestion will take place, so that becomes very important. So inner layer, mucosa. Next layer, submucosa which is more loose connective tissue. It does not have any epithelium with it. It's going to hold your blood and lymph vessels, your lymphatic system, uh, nerves, and its main function is nourishment. Because it contains mostly the vascular system, the vessels, it's going to nourish the layers of that wall. And then the muscular layer itself consists of two layers of smooth muscle. Uh, the inside has circular fibers, so we'll run in circles. The outside has longitudinal fibers, and those are going to help move your food throughout the alimentary canal. And then the outer layer, the fourth layer, is serosa. And that is visceral, remember visceral means outside, so visceral peritoneum, and its main function is protection. It's going to protect all of the underlying um, layers that were underneath it. It is going to secrete some serous, which is more watery fluid, to keep the canal from sticking to other tissues, helps with friction, and basically keeps it lubricated would be probably the best term to use. So if I look at this, um, you can see this is probably the best picture to look at the layers. Starting on the inside, I'm going to have the mucosa, which is this inner layer, and then the lumen is this opening that's on the inside. Submucosa is a small layer around it. And then your muscular layer, the circular, and if you look closely in your book, it's kind of hard to see up here, but basically this muscle circular runs up and down, and longitudinal, the lines run the long ways. And those two muscles help to move your food, to squeeze and push your food through that canal. And then the outside is the serosa that's going to protect it, and it's going to secrete a fluid to actually help protect it from things that are on the outside. Uh, the other pictures we'll look at more later, so I'm going to skip those for now. This would be the most important diagram on that slide. So movement, we eat food, it goes into the alimentary.
rudimentary canal, somehow gravity doesn't just pull it out. It has to move through everywhere. So the motor functions are basically two things. One, mixing. When I get food in my stomach, it has to be mixed with enzymes. It's mixed with the hydrochloric acid, bile, insulin, things like that. So mixing is important, and then I have to move that food on through. So mixing movements occur when basically smooth muscles are going to contract rhythmically in small sections of the tube. Because it's in small sections, it's called segmentation. Um, segmentation in the small intestine aids by contracting, relaxing. Basically, it's kind of a squeezing, churning motion. So I'm going to mix my food. Propelling movements, propulsion is called peristalsis. And peristalsis, I call more of like a wave-like because it, it also occurs in sections and it's going to contract, so it's going to squeeze the food down, then the next section is going to squeeze food down, squeeze food down. So that mass of food that you swallow is basically going to be propelled or pushed through the alimentary canal. And peristalsis is the main movement for propelling food. So here I can see some mixing. So this would be in the stomach. And here I don't see any muscle movement in this first picture. Here I can see that segmentation uh, squeezing here, mixing, the levels in your stomach's going to move. Even a little bit, you know, after you've eaten and you kind of hear sometimes the movement of food in your stomach, sometimes that can actually come from the churning in your stomach. And then the propelling or peristalsis is going to, this picture is probably the best. So here's my bolus, my lump of food. Here it's going to squeeze, it's going to push it. Then it's going to squeeze a little bit further, push it further. Squeeze and push, and that's how food moves through your alimentary canal. And I'll stop there, and then we'll move on to your mouth next.